obviously, there are electronic encyclopedias, handbooks, and dictionaries that you can use through the databases, but there are also tons of paper ones, and those would be in this clues. Now, if you do a clues search, you get both paper and electronic, right? That's what you get in clues. Paper and electronic, you get both. But if you go to databases, you get only electronic. Okay, so that's the main difference, okay? So if I say, if I say, like let's say I want something about marketing. Marketing, encyclopedia, or handbook, or dictionary. I'm, I'm, I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna put a star there. Dictionary, dictionaries. Uh, two, two parentheses, okay. Then I get, I get hits for marketing, encyclopedias, handbooks, and dictionaries. Some of them will be online, like this one, right? And others will be in paper, right? Like this guy. Handbook of Children and the Media will be at the Webster Library, fourth floor. And this is the call number. You write it down to get it. And actually, in this case, it's, it's been missing. And somebody's waiting for it if we find it. That's what missing plus one hold says. This one says it's due. But if you want to read up on the Handbook of Communication Ethics, you can request it when it's due. And then you'll be the next one in line to use it. And you have to use your library password for that. Okay? So this is a quick take. Uh, and that's what you have on the handout is that you use encyclopedias, handbooks, and dictionaries to play the word game, get a quick heads up about what's happening in the field, and get a short list of the best material that you could quote in your paper so that you could check if we have access to that through the library, okay? So that's kind of like the first step. It's kind of the broadest level of information. It's called the reference part, where you understand what's out there, okay? Then the next step is you try to zone in by finding books through the library catalog. What I would probably do myself is go to the databases, right, and click for business management and marketing, go look at all of the electronic dictionaries, encyclopedias, and handbooks, and use that, right? So for example, the International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences would probably be better than Wikipedia. It's the same idea, but I would try here first because that's like 100% relevant to what I'm trying to do for my paper. I'm just betting that I'm saving my time by doing it this way. And here I would write motivation and hitting enter. Same as Wikipedia, except we pay for this one and it's just for business. Now, if you know anything about internal motivation, you know that people in this field don't use internal motivation, they use intrinsic motivation. And if you look at the second result here, uh, this is actually what you get as a hit. This is intrinsic motivation. Uh, and uh, you, if you had done a search on internal motivation, I think it would have come up. Yeah, there you go. So if you do a search on internal motivation, right there, the first result is intrinsic motivation. Um, and it's flagging me that maybe I'm not using the right words. So that's a, that's a really cool feature of encyclopedias is that it helps you play the word game by making sure that the words you use are the same as the words in the field that the researchers are doing. So that's, that's a cool thing about encyclopedias. And then Wikipedia is, I, is like any other encyclopedia. I just prefer the inter International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences for most of the business research topics, just because that's, you know, it's just what I'm used to using. But if Wikipedia works for you, I don't care, right? What you have to remember, as with any encyclopedias in the university level, it is the starting point of your research. You want to understand the, the schools of thoughts, you want to un understand the words that are being used to describe your topic, make sure you're using those words, the recent developments, how the subject is subdivided. That's what encyclopedias are good for. And then you move on to finding books and research articles, especially in the paper, classic paper style, okay? And by the way, any good encyclopedia will have the credentials of the people who write it. Well, Wikipedia doesn't do that, but it does have this really neat track changes feature in the history of each page, which kind of works in a very new way of this kind of old idea of identifying the authors. But I don't, I don't have, I use Wikipedia often. I remember its context. It's like with any tools, you could do great damage and great good with the tool. It's just how you use it that changes, right? 
That's my personal take on the issue, and I know not everybody agrees, but that's it. I don't care. Uh, you have text, obviously, in this entry of the encyclopedia. Uh, you have footnotes. You have references. See here the C also? If you're interested in this topic, maybe, maybe what you're looking for is more like this other stuff. Okay, so that's any good encyclopedia, and Wikipedia does that. You see also, or uh, it, I think they're called the, um, the you know, those, those pages that explain the different types. Anyways, it's the, Wikipedia has something like that, subject fields. So that's, that's cool about an encyclopedia, because you could hit on a subject, but really want to look at something else, but you don't quite know what you don't know when you start the process. Right? That's a little bit of a problem because if you don't know what you don't know, then how good is your paper going to be? Especially if your prof knows a lot more than what you do. Well, let's not get into that right now. We're going to fix that. Um, so the see also part of the encyclopedia entry is really cool because you can click around and make sure you're in the right place in the encyclopedia, right concept. The other thing is look at this bibliography, right? What you want to do is this is what the authors of the entry in the encyclopedia are, are pointing to as either seminal works or important works. And you can check to see if we have these articles or these books at the library, right? That's the whole point of bibliographies. It's not only avoiding plagiarism and being called on academic integrity and failing your paper or failing the course because you've plagiarized, but also allowing science to exist because because you can build on the shoulders of these giants who are writing this encyclopedia, as Newton famously said, and as Google has parodied in his in its, its one of its corporate mottos, um, is that you could you could trace down these sources and use them in your paper, and that's completely fine. Make sure that you yourself do science properly and you quote the sources that you've used, because then you're signaling to your professor that you've done your job and you've done it well and that you've built on these important works. And that's why you do footnotes, right? I can never, you, could, you also have to do them because you'll get in lots of trouble if you don't, but really the real reason is you, you, you play the science game well and you signal to your professor that you're getting, that you're doing your research job properly, right? That you're quoting from good sources. Anywho, so you know you have here a few sources, and uh, because we subscribe to many databases from this publisher called Elsevier, you can actually see uh, if we have the full text to a lot of these just by clicking on a view full text. And because we subscribe to this other database called Sark Articles, you could view this article from the encyclopedia, and then boom. Okay, so that's one thing that is completely value added from the library's perspective is our some of our encyclopedias cross reference to all of the subscriptions that you have and there's no more that's easier to get access to the uh, to the uh, sources and if that paper seems interesting for your assignment then you quote it you use it you read it you download it you print it this is what we pay for we pay a lot of money for this stuff so that's the old way of doing research is from the pearl of citation where you click on the footnotes and you and you and you download or you read all these articles and you use them in your paper that's completely fine and that's the old school use of, of an encyclopedia that's what uh, that's what encyclopedias are good for uh, you uh, make sure you understand the topic you look at the schools of thought you make sure the words that you're, you're using reflect what's happening out there what I call the word game right you play the word game but you also learn but you could you could quote the encyclopedia in your paper, but don't rely just on the encyclopedia. The expectation, what you're supposed to do, is go well beyond. Okay, and uh, if you actually if you want to make a connection with some of the stuff that we talked about before, databases like Mergent, like Passport, GMID are also what I would call reference material because they give you a summary, the schools of thought, uh, statistics, like high-level statistics and analysis about a field, they summarize the field, right? And that's what encyclopedias do. So uh, what uh, the International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences does for business, for, for business topics and business research, uh, Passport GMID does for market research, and uh, IBIS World does for industrial research. It's a reference tool that gives you a nice summary, but the difference between Passport GMID and IBIS World is you could just quote and use as a final source, right? As opposed to when you're doing a topic research 
uh, you have to go deeper than just the encyclopedia. That's a little bit of a difference, but I think you get what I'm saying, right? So that's the that's the skinny on uh, on encyclopedias. And hey, if you're satisfied with Wikipedia and you look at the reference list at the bottom and a good Wikipedia entry should have a solid reference list and it quotes more than blogs and just some weird fluffy stuff on the web, um, then it's a solid Wikipedia entry. But the problem with Wikipedia or the issue is you have to evaluate how good it is on the topic that you're researching. Uh, whereas uh, my job as a librarian is to make sure when I buy an encyclopedia that it's good enough for your purposes. So that's why we have this in specific encyclopedia. So uh, the problem is you may not know how deep and how far this subject goes and whether or not what you're seeing in Wikipedia is enough. Although Wikipedia is getting better every day, obviously that's the whole point and mistakes are quickly fixed, but you still have to evaluate yourself. So. That's, that's enough about encyclopedias, I think, right? So the idea is that um, I've tried to provide this uh, through the databases, this list of electronic encyclopedias, dictionaries, and handbooks, right? So you could, for example, use the Oxford uh, dictionaries, the different dictionaries from Oxford to uh, see. And we have a whole series of Oxford dictionaries that you can connect to. And this is the Oxford University Press, the big publisher, uh, that uh, cover business. So like business uh, dictionaries, uh, dictionary of finance, that kind of stuff that you could check definitions of words in the industry and in, in, in the research field to make sure that you're playing the word game properly, right? Um, so for here, for example, this is the Oxford. This is not on the free web. In Oxford, it's economics and business. So if you click here, you could see the different sources that you're hitting. And like, for example, a dictionary of marketing, you know, if you have an acronym in marketing and you're not quite sure, you could Google it or you could try the Oxford uh, dictionaries uh, you know, maybe you get a better response, you get more insight. I don't know. You could try the try 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 the difference and see if it works out for you. 